Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another iteration of Makers of Sausage. Here we are, a new hot lever that everyone's been gassing up, the Alpha 49S lever. I've been hearing so much about it, I need to find out for myself. So what's in the box? This is what it came standard with. A couple items. One little interesting thing, but we'll get into it in its own time. So, lever body, of course. You ain't getting a lever without a lever body. Very well made, nothing to complain about, everything's aligned. They had very, very cool Omron switches. They felt brand spanking new. The paddles on it were like nice and snappy. Very satisfying click. Um, you guys, if you ever get it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Very responsive. Now, it had two shafts. That's what I found strange. I know that it has a 7.25 millimeter one, which is a standard thin uh, shaft. But it also had a little chubby one, the 9 to 10 millimeter. I didn't know exactly, but it needs a larger bobbin that it didn't come with, unfortunately. The one that came with only fits in the 7.25. Of course, we've got the clear screwing bat top. You know, you want to maintain a theme. That's the one you want. You want the clear one. And it has, of course, the standard El Clasico dust washer. You've seen it on every lever. It's just, uh, they must make them by the billions. I don't know what the hell. And of course, the 15.5 millimeter actuator, as it's what's going to keep your lever nice and snug against those switches. And of course, the E-clip. Don't forget the E-clip. Don't forget the E-clip, okay? Don't lose it. That's what's in the box standard, but I bought some extra items, okay, very important. 35A tension grommet, you know, I live and die by 35A. Because I bought two shafts, I might as well get an extra bat top so I can separate them visually without having to know what's inside. And because we're trying to maintain a theme, hey, we need that smoky sweet, say, mid to translucent smoke dust washer for maximum drip. Now, the most important component, if you're moving from Japanese to Korean, is the conversion harness. Do not forget to buy this. When it comes to tools, all you need is a Phillips screwdriver, a needle nose plier, and a tiny flat screwdriver that I forgot to mention because it's already in the Panthera case. But if you have a little flat head, it can help you pop out the E-clip real quick and easy. So I'll show you when the time comes. First things first, let's get to business replacing the grommet. All you gotta do is remove those first top four screws and just keep an eye out for the nuts that are on the opposite side. Keep your finger behind it until it screws off and then it just drops off and then it's nice and easy. Rinse and repeat for all four parts. Nothing too difficult. As you can see, it's a bang bang job. Now you ask, why am I using 35A tension? That's just from prior experience. My previous lever, I ran 35A. It was the best decision after moving from the stock 25. Just like shoes, each brand has their own sizing and generally they're around the same ballpark. Once you know your fit, you can kind of guess between brands. Now that all the screws are off, we can pop the metal lid. And I actually like this little touch, but I have a plastic lid on top of that to keep it secure, which is a really nice touch. And all you gotta do is push the bobbin through, comes out, and then you just push in the new one the same way. Just, just make sure that everything aligns. You see the little dots on the top of the rubber? That makes sure that you know that that's the top side. And since it fits in nice and snug, pop the plastic lid back on, just reverse order everything. And that's how easy it is. Honestly, you can buy a whole bunch of tension grommets. You can go all the way to 55 or whatever you like and just experiment. It's, they're not very expensive parts and you can help yourself fine tune what kind of configuration you find most comfortable. What I think the trick is now is to just hold it upside down, put the little nut through the hole because it's actually shaped exactly like the nut. So it drops in. Keep your finger underneath and then once you drop the screw on top, it will line up and thread in and then you can just keep repeating that process, making it super easy. It just takes a couple minutes. Um, yeah, super duper easy as you can see, nothing too fancy. A lot of people get held back seeing things being pulled apart and feeling like they can't put it back together. Telling you this is level one, super easy stuff, nothing too technical. It's just a more of a, you know, you psych yourself out thinking that it's too scary, but there it is, dude. Brand new tension. Now we're moving to the quote unquote most difficult part of the process, which is the wiring. This may look scary, but let me explain it to you and it will make a lot of sense. As you can see, there's four colored cables and each one is a little bit longer than the next and it goes in a clockwise motion. So as you can see, the green one is the shortest. You start on a side, the long side, and each switch has two little forks that you can plug in your cable. So that means that you put one color and one black one. The black one represents ground. So as you can see, there's four colored cables and four black ones. So for each switch, you have a color and a black one, color and a black one. So you start with the green, then you go orange, then yellow, then red. The way I like to imagine it in my mind is that it's like a traffic stoplight with four colors, right? 
you start green, then he goes orange, yellow, red, stop, and then you've done. Once that's done, then you pair all the black cables next to each color, and then that's complete. I unfortunately missed filming that. Uh, my camera stopped recording, but that's what the final version looks like. And as you can see, it makes perfect sense. It looks a bit sloppy, but that's how it is. Don't worry about it, super simple. In particular, this harness that I got, the little clips on them are very secure. In the past, if you get like uh, older levers, I found that if you use them a lot, if you play a lot and you travel with your case, they kind of slide out. These are very rock solid. They lock in, they click in, very hard to take out. So just make sure you put the right colors in. Once they're in, they're never coming out. Now that the hard work's out of the way, you're good to go. Now we're moving on to the next step, which is getting rid of your Sanwa JLF lever. It's very simple, you know, good old crusty Japanese lever. But you know what? Let's get rid of it. Let's pop the pop the lid and let's get rid of the ball top. Now the way that we do that is that you get your flathead screwdriver that's inside the case for this in this particular Razor Panthera. You just hold it in place and you screw the top off and it comes off immediately. It's super easy. Then it has a little collar. You take the dust washer off and there it is. It's free to be removed now. So pop the lid again. As you can see, all you have to do is take off this cable, which is super easy. Um, in your case, there may be a little bit of glue on that connector to keep it in place. So make sure that you remove that little piece of glue. It's a hot glue, nothing too special. Once you pop it off, you're ready to remove the lever body. It's just four screws on each corner, nothing too dramatic. There's no real particular order on how to remove them. Just do it, no problem. Just keep your screws aside. I like to keep the same threads for the same holes just because they can match and not cause any problems. Now the body's out. And as you can see, there's one more dust washer underneath. I just place it there so I don't forget it. And look at that little black cable. That is something that the Panthera and some other levers have, which is a ground cable between the lever itself and the body. As you can see, the alignment is easy because the converter hangs correctly on the side where the adapter is. So all I do is that I screw the top right corner just so I can keep it from falling down every time I want to adjust the ground cable. So I'm just going to screw that in. Don't have to be super tight, just hand tight. Once you want to finally align everything, then you give it a tight one. Now that it's not going to fall down, I'm going to grab the screw and I'm going to make sure I put my grounding cable between the body and the lever itself. And once I thread the screw through, it's going to be locked in. I can guarantee in my mind that my lever is grounded and safe. Once that's done, I'm just going to put the rest of the remaining uh, screws in. I prefer a crisscross pattern. Uh, that just comes from my working on my own cars over the years. It's just better to do that. It just applies pressure evenly across the surface. That way, when you apply your own torque over the years, you know that it's going to be in correct alignment and it won't be wobbling around. Time for the cherry on top. Once you make sure that the alignment of your pins are correct, you hear a nice safe click and it's installed and you're ready to go. Man, you're almost there. We are at the final stretch. Time to install the shaft. As you guys know in life, it's very important to install the shaft, so make sure you guys do it properly. We do have the old Classico dust washer, but we ain't doing that. We've got the Smoky Smoky Save Me Too. We're gonna place that in between our uh, shaft, pop it in. Once it's in, we're almost there. So I'm just gonna pop the lid one more time and hold it back just in case it slides out because it's not secured yet. I'm just gonna put something underneath the case so I can see it at a better angle. We're gonna put our actuator, fat side facing towards us, that way you know that the uh, all the switches are being touched. And then the most important bit, don't lose the E-clip. This is where you lose it, okay? So be careful. You're gonna grab your needle nose plier. You're gonna line it up. And then once it's in place, you just close it in very softly and it clicks in safely. You can hear it. And once that's done, it ain't going anywhere. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We have it, okay? We've changed it from a Samoa JLF to an Alpha 49S lever. And it's just that simple. I hope that this tutorial gave you the confidence you need to try it out for yourself. It's something very simple. And of course, everybody's support means so much to me. So please subscribe and look forward to more FGC content. Until then, catch us around. Peace.